Welcome to Dateline Schools, a presentation of the St. Clair County Regional Educational Service Agency with your host, Terry Harrington. Welcome to Dateline Schools. This year we've seen all kinds of unusual weather across the country. and It's really had an impact on schools and thousands of students as well. So on this edition of Dateline Schools, we thought we'd take a look at how safe our local schools are from weather and other disasters as we talk with the director of the St. Clair County Office of Emergency Management, Jeff Friedland. Before we begin our conversation with Jeff, let's tune in to this education update. Thank you, Terry. This month, students statewide in grades three through nine will once again take the annual MEEP test. MEEP stands for Michigan Educational Assessment Program and it is the central measurement of student progress in those grades. Students in grades three through eight will be tested in English, language, arts, and mathematics. Students in grades five and eight also will be tested in science. A social studies test will be given to sixth and ninth graders. Students wishing to get a jump start on the test can go to the Michigan Department of Education's website where they can download MEEP tests from the last 12 years to use as practice. Teachers were the students when educators gathered in August for the 21st Century Learning Symposium. More than 500 people attended the workshop at Marysville High School to learn more about bringing technology into the classroom. Topics ranged from iPads and other mobile devices in the classroom to storytelling for the YouTube generation. Students from the county and throughout the state also were on hand to demonstrate various technology projects they've been working on. This is the fourth consecutive year Reese sponsored the symposium. A new initiative at Wood Woodland Developmental Center has students on their best behavior. The program is called ROAR, which stands for Respect, Own Your Own Choices, Always Be Safe, and Responsibility. ROAR is a part of the Positive Behavior Intervention and Support process. The program expectations will be taught in the classrooms, and students will be awarded for the following for following ROAR guidelines. Principal Diana Mason says ROAR will make good, being good a little more fun and contribute toward Woodland's goal of helping students become the best citizens they can be. Fall is a perfect time to visit the Pine River Nature Center. The bugs are gone, the weather is cooler for hiking, and the trails are decorated with many colors of the season. Extra incentives to visit the center this autumn are the Fall Star Party on October 22nd and the Build a Bat House workshop on November 19th. The Nature Center is on Castor Road next to the Goodles County Park and is operated by the St. Clair County RESA. For more information about fall offerings at the Nature Center, it is available by going to the RESA website at sccresa.org. And finally, remember that Halloween is right around the corner. Be extra careful on Halloween night for children out and about who may be more focused on candy than on cars on the busy roads. For Education Update, I'm Christian McGeechee. Terry Harrington and Dateline Schools will return in a moment. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Welcome back to Dateline Schools. In this program, we're taking a look at school safety, especially as we take a look at the news these days 
and see all the national disasters happening around the country. So how safe are our schools here in St. Clair County? Joining me and my guest today is the director for the St. Clair County Office of Emergency Management, Jeff Freeland. Jeff, welcome to the program. Thanks, Terry. Glad to be here. So, Jeff, we do think of our schools as safe haven for kids, not only from violence and that type of thing, but even from national disasters like we've been seeing between the hurricanes and the flooding and the fires and earthquakes and all of that kind of stuff. So how safe are we here locally with our schools? I think schools do a good job in, in their planning and their exercising. Uh, you have to realize when you look at Joplin, uh, that school took a direct hit and there were fatalities and injuries. Any facility that takes a direct hit, uh, uh, there are going to be some consequences. But I think the actions of the schools uh, in St. Clair County have minimized uh, uh, those effects by having effective plans, looking at where the least dangerous locations are, and testing their plans. So. I really give credit to uh, the schools that are uh, very positive. Now let's talk a little bit about those plans. I mean, is that something that you help them to direct or is this something the school staffs do independently? Well, the schools uh, somewhat do it independently. However, we are tying the plans in. Uh, we're hoping that, or we're having every school district have a coordination center, which is basically their central office uh, area that would contact us and, and work with us directly uh, in the emergency operations center if it was a large event. So there's good flow of information back and forth and there's a better understanding of what's going on. Usually when we, we think of disaster, of course, we think of the first resp responders, our police, fire, ambulance folks. But in a disaster of, uh, of a nature, a natural sta uh, standpoint, who, who usually all is involved, not just police and fire and, and uh, ambulances, of course? Well, I always look at, at police, fire, and EMS as emergency responders mm -hmm. because the first responders are your neighbors, your mm -hmm. teachers, uh, the people sitting next to you, they're going to be first to render aid. So mm -hmm. uh, the more we can educate uh, our residents in, in preparation and preparedness, um, the re emergency responders can focus on the true emergencies. Mm -hmm. Now, since 9-11, uh, since those attacks occurred, you know, 10 years ago, now it's hard to believe it's been that long. Yes. Homeland Security has really become an important issue. What, what role do they play with what you do for our county and with what our schools need to do in preparation as well? well I think part of Homeland Security, not only uh, we're in an international border, but uh, there's a lot of science and technology uh, uh, efforts being d to develop the tools for collaboration. And St. Clair County has signed a five-year agreement with the Homeland Security to be a test bed. And one of the projects is the Virtual Cities Project that is here in uh, St. Clair County. It's the first in the nation. And part of that is, is having the school floor plans uh, available for responders in the field to view uh, photos of critical locations within uh, the schools. And we hope to end up with virtual tours of every school building so responders know in advance uh, what they're walking into. Talk a little bit about that virtual city. What is that whole project about? Uh, it's an information sharing platform. Some of it is live feeds, uh, some is static data but it gives you the entire picture of an incident. And we're gonna open up this, um, the opportunity to, to view and participate uh, with school officials too, because a lot of times there's events going on in the community and the emergency responders just don't have time to pick up a phone and say, you know, by the way, this is occurring, you know, and, and you have people, uh, schools, businesses, everybody's anxious to know what's going on and are they in the affected area. And what we want to do is, is provide the tool where the school superintendents or their designees can actually see the incident as, as it's unfolding, have the information in front of it, and, and make it a tool for them to make, you know, good decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in addition to, to our schools, I'm sure there's other concerns for you, especially with our electric, our water, uh, our sewer, our roads, all of those other entities. How, how do you work to protect them as well? plus the schools, plus your own home, and I mean, all of that stuff. Well, I've come to the realization that we cannot protect everybody from everything. Uh, there's, there's just no way. If something, uh, somebody wants to harm us, they're gonna find a way to do it. Our goal is to minimize the effect, and we can minimize by having generators uh, in our homes, in our businesses. Uh, we can have 72 uh, hours worth of uh, supplies uh, things like that. Have a plan. Have a communications plan. You know the basic preparedness. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about 72 hours. I know you've uh, been putting putting a lot of emphasis on that. 
How is our community responding to that? Well, you, you seeing that we're starting to get in pretty good shape for that? Well, I wouldn't say pretty good, but mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. we are starting to get some responses. I mean, I think that um, in a lot of cases, uh, there's a huge gap between um, the level of, of the entire county being prepared for 72 hours and, and the actuality of you know a certain percentage. So I think the gap's starting to close, but it's a very difficult message, and, and most people uh, really take note of the message after an event, <laughs> and then you have about 30 days to really dwell in, and, and mm -hmm. otherwise they're off into something else, and oh, it won't happen, it already happened, won't happen, and you know, it's it, we're a very complacent society. Yeah, aren't we though? You know, we just recently seen, you know, Hurricane Irene going up the East Coast, you got the firestorm in Texas these days, you've, you mentioned Joplin, Missouri. We really do wait almost too often until it's too late to react, don't we? Yes, and, and you mentioned Joplin, and that was a very prepared community. Um, did some research there, they had a good warning system, they had good notification, and, and it was a powerful storm. And uh, people have to realize that Mother Nature, if, mm -hmm. if she wants to pack a wallop, she's going to, and there's nothing you can do to change it mm -hmm. uh, other than be prepared. And, and Irene kind of petered out uh, as it went north. But when you look at Vermont and, and that, you know, there's some serious problems up there. New York was, was basically spared. But the wildfires, you know, you're losing homes out there. Um, it's just been the last few years, uh, natural disasters has, has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And as we may complain about the cold weather, we may be complain, can complain about the snow or whatever, we really are pretty fortunate here where we live, aren't we? Yeah, I, I was the first to complain about spring being kind of cold and that, but um, as I watched what was going on um, down south, I, I just said, you know, boy, that could be us, and, and that that would not be good. It was not good to be down there, but, you know, uh, it happened. I mean, you, you can't pick and choose where things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. they, they happen, so I guess we can't complain too much. Mm -hmm. Do you always kind of look back at some of those situations? You know, Joplin, again, is another uh, example you've used and say, okay, where, do, where does St. Clair County stack up? What can we learn from what they did, how they work through these? Yes, you always try to learn from somebody else's misfortune rather than your own mm. because um, a lot of times, uh, you know, it's, it's like a, a, a baseball team that has a bad <laughs> year, the manager's gone, you know, and, and to reflect on the season afterwards, not the best thing to do, but um, we're improving our public warning. You're gonna see in the next few weeks, uh, uh, new alert devices that are going to mm -hmm. be made available that will automatically go off from the National Weather Service and they're going to work in St. Clair County. Mm -hmm. um, the weather radios, uh, they don't work in, in most areas of the county, but this device will. So, But it's it'll be that much better because we'll also be able to give notifications of chemical releases and, and things like that. And we can target the areas. It doesn't have to be the entire county. We can pinpoint by zip codes. And it's also going to be international that uh, we're working with Canadians. If they have an incident that's going to affect our side or vice versa, we can notify each other uh, with one message. That really kind of makes it unique with what you have to deal with because we are on that international border. Yes, we're, we're sitting here, Lampton County, St. Clair County, you know, we're just a, a community with a river running through it mm -hmm. until we hit the layers of the, the provincial, state, and, and the federals that. Uh, you know, they, they make laws that are applicable for millions of people, and, and we're one little pebble uh, mm -hmm. on the beach. And yet, uh, we're so critical with the infrastructure and, and everything here. Um, we could solve a lot of our problems if the bureaucracy went away. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not, but we do have uh, the attention of uh, uh, both federal governments, and we're going to be implementing uh, the new Canadian and U.S. Uh, warning systems here. We're going to be one of the first to, to do that. So like I say, there's a lot of things that we've taken to Washington mm -hmm. and, and clobbered them over the head and said, you know, hey, we're not Detroit, we're not New York, mm -hmm. but look at what's in St. Clair County. And then it's like, oh, we mm -hmm. never knew that. Okay, great. Let's get back to schools a little bit, being that's the focus of the program, obviously. What, is there any requirements that schools need to do in terms of uh, tornado safety and making sure students are, are prepared or protected? Ba that basically, there's state law that says you'll have X number of tornado drills, severe weather drills, uh, fire drills, and lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get notified uh, by the schools, and on occasion, we'll stop in and, and watch one of them. Um, quite often, we'll be invited in from a school to 
look at, at their tornado drill and, and perhaps offer suggestions for less dangerous places. I use the word le least dangerous or less dangerous because uh, I never want to say that some place is safe because in essence, you know, um, you can't guarantee 100% safety. So we work with the schools there um, and uh, very pleased. Uh, you know, a couple schools we've worked with, we're even at the point now of a conversation that says uh, you're in the middle of a lockdown and somebody pulls the fire alarm, what are you going to do? And now it's like, oh, didn't <laughs> think of that. You know, So mm -hmm. we're progressing and uh, the schools in St. Clair County do a good job. Mm -hmm. Do you do any direct training with the school staffs too? Uh, we have. Um, we've worked uh, in getting 800 megahertz radios in all the mm -hmm. schools. Uh, we did some planning sessions several years ago th with RESA in the schools. Uh, I know the Sheriff's Department and Portland Police Department do uh, um, law enforcement training uh, within the schools. So, um, But you got to realize that government resources are starting <laughs> to dwindle just like uh, school resources and it's making, making it tougher. Yeah, definitely. That that is for sure. Um, one of the things too, when we've been watching these natural disasters happening on the news and stuff, it always seems like one of the first places they turn to for shelter is a local school. Do we do that? Same? Is that part of our planning here in Saint Clair County? Yes, um, I've been here twenty years, and and we've always looked at schools, and we're modifying that a little bit because. Uh, um, for smaller scale events, if we can use other facilities that are in the in the community without disrupting a school session, that's ideal. In large scale events, certainly uh, schools are the places to go. And one of the things we found that uh, uh, several of the school districts have central feeding uh, kitchens, and we're looking at trying to get generators in to power those kitchens. So. That gives us the availability of a whole lot of meals in the event uh, of a longer term power outage. What's, what's all in, involved in determining, hey, we need to open a shelter, we need to open it at this facility or this school? What, what all goes into that, that decision making? Well, we look at what we're do identifying is primary and secondary shelters. So the incident commander, uh, the person in charge in the field has an idea. If you're going to do an evacuation, you want to be able to do it right now and tell where, where the people to, um, the location is to mm -hmm. go. You can't wait. So we're identifying the primary secondaries. We're getting the registration cards. We're training some teams uh, to go in and support the school. And we look at uh, location. Certainly you don't want to put it uh, too close to say a plume area if it's a chemical release or uh, a damage area if it's a tornado or, or something like that. So. Uh, we try to make some judgments, and it's not automatic. It's it's a joint determination. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, during a disaster, how how would you communicate that to the residents that hey, you can go to school A, school B, or school C for a shelter? How how's that communicated out? Well, if we have power, uh, we'll you know we'll use our websites. We'll use media. Um, we can have handouts. We can do that type of thing. If we don't have power things are going to get more difficult. Then we're going to have to send people into the neighborhoods or as they're leaving, um, inform them where to go. Mm -hmm. Now one thing you mentioned earlier, you, had, you talked about the 800 megahertz radios. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. I'm sure the general public has no clue what an 800 megahertz radio is, how it works, and how, how we use them with the schools and, and for county preparedness. 800 megahertz is, is really uh, been an opportunity for the community as St. Clair County, not just emergency responders. But we have school partners, we've got community partners. It allows us numerous talk groups so um, we're not clogging one channel. Uh, with the schools it allows us to communicate directly to them or they can communicate to the incident commander perhaps on the outside of the building uh, while they're inside. Uh, we test the radios uh, weekly, uh, so we make sure they work, um, giving the schools uh, in the community some experience, uh, because if you're not an emergency responder and that radio sits on your <laughs> desk, uh, you may forget how to use it. Uh, so we actually do a couple different talk groups, and uh, it's been very beneficial, and uh, we're, we're actually expanding out to the private schools now. So every school building in uh, St. Clair County will have some communications, because if the internet goes down, if phones go down, uh, we still need a way to transmit and, and share information. 
And of course, the the towers and that we have what four in the county? Three? I believe we have five now. Five now. Okay, and they're all um, generator powered, and yes. should there be a disaster? Yes. Okay. Now, I guess one of the things too that makes it pretty unique with these radios is, like you said, you can talk. They can talk to the police or fire agency that's responding. And my guess is for some of these districts, like let's use Memphis for example, they really cross two counties. Yes. So that's got to be a huge help, I would think. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the, I believe the high school is in Macomb County and across the street, the, the junior mm -hmm. high is in St. Clair County. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to have Macomb County responding to one school, St. Clair County responding to another school. Uh, so that, yeah, it's instead of having two or three radios, they can, ha they can have one and, and do what they need to do. Has that really helped out uh, your, your first responders throughout the county as they've been coming online with this too? Oh, it has, and, and people just really don't realize the magnitude of, of um, the effectiveness of handling incidents. Uh, uh, whenever there was a, two or three major incidents, they were all on the same channel and it was a nightmare. And now we can segregate them off into different uh, talk groups and uh, um, everybody handles it. We're not clogging the airways and messages aren't being lost. Mm -hmm. And we've learned from uh, certain disasters too, cell phones aren't always reliable either. Are right, they? And, <laughs> and, but on the other hand too, uh, you know, when we look into social media, we're really, we really wanna look at pulling social media into our system. Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily the 911 system, but I think there's a lot of value, sure. so. What, what should parents be doing to help their family prepare for a possible disaster? I think having having their home prepared, uh, the 72 hours, just with the basics. You can go to FEMA's website and they'll give you a list that's you know six pages long and you know a couple hundred dollars later. Uh, <laughs> and we can't afford that in today's world. So you have the basics, you've got the, the food, the water, you know, the medicine, uh, some simple things that at least get you going and um, having a, a point of contact uh, out of the area. It's easier to call out of the area than it is in. So, so many kids have cell phones now and, and some kids are, are home alone, parents are working, we're off in the 27 mm -hmm. different directions. So having a point of contact where everybody can call and check in is, is really critical. So trying to develop the culture that, you know, emergencies, can and will a hap happen and we need to be prepared and, and trying to get people not to be complacent. You know one way you've done that recently uh, earlier this year especially getting kids to help is develop uh, that campaign be very aware for 27 or 72 or 72 hours. Oh yeah. Tell That's, us a little bit about that campaign yet. Well we've been focusing on, on be ready 72 St. Clair mm -hmm. County you know and, and part of it is we decided to have a video and audio and print contest for, for basically school age kids and uh, uh, we had 122 entries uh, for the first year, and uh, there were gift cards, there were some good prizes given out, but um, we had a hard time picking our winners in the videos. We ended up with three winners. Uh, uh, we had three audio that have been playing on the radio stations, and there were three print ones that uh, we're going to be using. So what I like is, is you're using the community to educate the community. and. Mm -hmm. And when a, when a child hears his PSA on the radio or um, we're playing the, the videos up to Birchwood Mall uh, before the mo movies, so we're rotating them around. And, and I think that's great. And, and next year we're going to have the contest again. And I really expect even more entries. Mm -hmm. And just as we wrap up the program, let's just pause for, uh, for a minute and just take a look at a couple of the entries that were into this contest. Be ready, St. Clair County. In the event of severe weather, it is ever important to stay informed and prepared. Thunderstorms, strong winds, hail, and tornadoes are severe factors in Michigan weather. In the event of severe weather, a series of cautions will be issued. The first is an advisory, which is simply a heads up that the weather will be changing. The next degree of notifications is a watch. A watch means that conditions can result in severe weather, but it hasn't happened yet. If a severe weather event is occurring, a warning is issued. This means that you need to take direct action. We interrupt our program to bring you this special weather bulletin. The National Weather Service in Detroit has issued a tornado warning for St. Clair County. For a tornado warning, move to the lowest part of your house without windows. Residents in the St. Clair County area are advised to seek shelter immediately. Always make sure you have a survival kit ready and make sure to tune into local radio and television stations for updates. If severe weather hits, be ready, St. Clair County.
event of severe weather, always remember to stay indoors. Turn in your local weather channel for more information. A tornado watch means that the conditions are right and that local authorities are on the lookout for any tornadoes in the area. A tornado warning, however, means a tornado has been spotted, and you should be prompted by your weather channel to take cover. But where to take cover? Make a plan. Take cover in a low space such as a basement or a storm cell. Any low ground will do. No doors, no windows, and be sure to stay in the middle of the room. Jeff, we've, we've covered a lot of information on what a family should do, what the community needs to do to get ready for any possible disaster. Where can people get more information again uh, as they put together their own kits and, and their own family plans? They can go to our website, uh, sinclaircounty.org, under emergency management, or they can go to Be Ready uh, St. Clair County. Well, Jeff, thank you for sharing with us. And Appreciate we, it, Terry. We want to thank you for sharing with us on this edition of Dayline Schools.